um, in a minute as well. So without further ado, let's get cracking on our pasta. Now, pasta is a very basic recipe. Um, I think that it doesn't matter if you're a um, Italian grandma in, in Italy making pasta, it's just flour, egg, and oil, okay? And it's a pretty, um, the ratios are pretty simple. So there is a recipe. So obviously, if anybody knows me, I always like to go into the recipe so I don't make a mistake. Um, but as you can see, I've told the Thermomix that I'm making the, the basic pasta dough today, which is just, it's just called fresh pasta dough. Um, and that's the one we're gonna go into. And I'm just gonna hit start cooking. And for those of you who know, um, and you've got a Thermomix, you know that it's just step by step, your scales will come up for your flour to get weighed into. Now I've already made some pasta today. Um, so I didn't even clean my bowl before I'm making this lot of pasta because as the, those of you who know me um, know that I don't like the wash your bowl step. Um, if I can avoid it, I just keep going. Um, so I'm just gonna put in 200 grams of flour. Now, this is just, I'm just using baker's flour. You can just use plain flour, whichever you've got. Um, if you've got a pizza flour, that's good too. The baker's flour has got um, a higher gluten content um, and it's the one where you buy at Woolworths in the big um, five kilo, are they Shane? Uh, 10 kilo, 10 kilo bag. Um, so, and it's on the bottom shelf at Woolworths. You'll see the baker's flour there. So it's the cheapest way to buy flour as well. Okay, so to my flour, I'm just gonna pop in two eggs. There we go. Two eggs and a bit of our olive oil. Now, it says a tablespoon of olive oil. Now, with this recipe, it's 200 of flour, 200 of egg, and a tablespoon of olive oil. Now you can up that to 500 grams of flour and five eggs, and you still need probably five tablespoons of oil as well, or just a little bit less. So um, you can do up to up to half like 500 grams of flour in one go in your Thermomix as well. Um, I did a double batch, and I'll show you how much that is. I did a single batch last night, and it made enough of the ravioli for our whole family. So one batch does go a fair way as well. So popped our lid on, hit next, and now that's just gonna knead for two minutes. So when that comes out, I'll show you what it comes out like, but what you do then is you set your pasta aside. Now it's not like bread, it doesn't have any yeast, so you're not waiting for it to rise or get bigger or anything like that. You're literally just waiting for it to for the oil basically just to marry with the oil, with the egg and the flour. So one that I've already done, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, and like I said, this is a double batch. And you can see how that, you'll see the difference between that um, dough and what's gonna come out of there. So you can see that's just one nice, um, it's quite like, it's a bit oily. It's sort of just the same consistency probably as, um, Play-Doh sort of consistency. Um, so we'll, that's what we'll work with in a minute. So just um, when you're working with your dough, you wanna make sure it doesn't get too dried out. So I had a fan on before and I've turned that off because I don't want my dough to dry out. Um, some people work with a damp cloth and they'll actually put a damp cloth over their, um, over their pasta as well. Righty-o. Now, have we got any questions? Does anyone want to come off mute and ask any questions so far? We've got 34 seconds. Speak now or forever hold the peace. Um, uh, hi, Gemma. Hello. I was wondering whether um, instead of oil, if water can be used or not. No. It, the, the olive oil is actually really important because that's what makes that is actually what uh, marries the flour and the egg together. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. No worries. You could um, 
with the oil, if you didn't want to use olive oil, you could use a different type of oil. It wouldn't matter if it wasn't olive oil, if that helps. Okay, so when you get that out, you can see that it looks crumbly. It's sort of the same as um, big bread crumbs, okay? And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. So pop that out onto your thermo mat. Now the thermo mat is available as a host reward or you can get it at the mix shop um, as well. And it's really good for when you're working with dough and pastry and all that kind of stuff. So now, as you can see, this is really crumbly, which is how it should be. There we go. Now, what you do with this, so you can see that, just go back onto the bench stuff. Thanks. See how you can see it's all little pieces. What you want to do is you want to get that together and make it into a into one ball like that. Right -o. Okay, Wesley, you're up. Come and introduce yourself. <laughs> so I um I always need a little helper when I'm doing pasta. And Wes, right from when um COVID started, Wes was the bread maker of the family, weren't you? Yeah. Yep. And the pasta man. So I thought, oh, I can't do it by myself when I'm on camera. I need my little buddy. So there we go. So that's what you wouldn't want to do with your pasta, okay? You want it to be in a ball like that. Then you can just wrap that up. And it says leave it for 15 minutes, but as long as it's wrapped in the silicon, you could actually leave that for as long as you like. So you could make that at lunchtime if you wanted and then roll it out, you know, at 4 o'clock before dinner or whatever you wanted. So minimum of 15 minutes, leave that. Okay. So, Wes, here's our one that we've got. Here's one we've prepared earlier, buddy. Yep. Yep, so it's nice and, it's nice and like Play-Doh, isn't it? Uh, like Play-Doh? You don't know. <laughs> okay, so now this is, like I said, this is a double batch. So, I want to probably cut it in half. Mm -hmm. And I want to, actually, I want to keep that half nice and um, out of the out of the air. So I'm just gonna wrap it with my other bit and then we'll just work on half at a time. Okay, so now with this one, you really, you've got so many options with your pasta dough of what you wanna do. So probably the, my favorite, or not favorite, but the thing I do the most is lasagna sheets, okay? So that's a very basic one. So we can take that off, that wasn't meant to be on there. There we go, that's the attachment. So you've just got your plain pasta roller. Now, lasagna sheets are really simple. Probably break that into four, four bits. Okay, and like if you could, you could roll those up and just keep those out of the air as well. Okay, so with your first bit of dough, um, you want to have a bit of flour, have a little bit of flour on your mat and you want to just give this a bit of a roll out. Now, the more even piece of dough that you can start with, the better, because I'll show you what happens if you want to keep that. And you want to try and get it about as wide as your machine. So if you want to go down on that, Shane, so you can see the, yeah, so that's the width of your pasta. So you want to make from here to here about that um, wide across the bottom and you want that to be nice and flat like that. So you want to sort of make it so that the bit that's first going into your roller is nice and even, and this could be a little bit more even, but that's okay, um, and about the width of your machine. Okay, then we'll just start rolling, Wesley. I'll hold it, you just roll. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so what that's done, obviously, is just flattened it out, um, you start on probably your biggest setting. So we've started on, were we on seven? Seven, yep. And are we going to do one in between? No, we're gonna, are we going to do there in between? So then go to about four, four or five. Go again. And it's very good to have someone doing the turning for you. Quicker. It's good to have a roller because 
as you can see, I am using two hands when I'm passing it through. So it is a bit hard to do the rolling and the passing yourself. And now we're ready. So I start with this end that I've got a little sort of endy bit. And can I go back onto the, yeah. So I've got like an endy piece here. I'm just gonna fold that up so that I've got a nice edge. And then we're gonna go through again. But now we're on one. I've got it. That's it. And I could have actually flowered that a little bit too. See how it's sort of sticking a little bit there, but that's all right, keep going. Beautiful. Okay, so as soon as you've been through on one, that's your piece of pasta. So then what you can do, just keep the flour up to it, just a little bit, just to rub it in. You don't want it to be drowned in flour, but you do want it to be, um, to start drying. So now what you could do with that is you could put it on your drying rack um, and start drying it. Now, you don't, you, how long you dry your pasta for depends how long you want to keep it for. If you want to um, just cook your pasta straight away, you could actually slice this up in um, sections and put it straight into a lasagna and cook it straight away. But if you wanted to keep this and cook it a different day, you'd want to make sure it was completely dry before you stored it because obviously it's going to go mouldy if it's not um, completely dried out. Now, we're going to get a bit fancy because obviously this is lasagna sheets. You just cut it to how big your dish is and use it as lasagna. But we might make this into spaghetti. How about that? Wes's favourite. Can we make it fettuccine? Oh, you want, we'll do, we'll do one spaghetti, one fettuccine. How about we do, hang on a sec, let's get another one done. Because, okay, we'll do one, another big one. Righto. So we'll do that again. You can see how it is, it's good to have a helper. Has anybody, I didn't ask if anybody's making their pasta already. I'd love to know, I know Kelly is. Gemma, just asked that in the chat oh. um, and Debbie has made it in the past um, a long time ago though. Righto, cool. Okay, quick, well, are you on seven? Good boy, yep. Oh, I didn't flower, but that's okay. Might be okay. <laughs> the worst thing that can happen, if you, don't, um, if you don't flower before you roll in, it sticks a bit. All you have to do is go backwards and you'll get it back up and then you can start again. Yeah. And you can obviously see the more pasta you have in your ball, the bigger your piece is going to be. I want to, yeah. I'm gonna Gem, do. Catherine just said that she still has her pasta maker in the box oh. from, um, from a wedding gift 20 years ago. Yep. I think I missed the start when you were talking about how long you had yeah. your <laughs> Yeah, Kath, I was the same. I think mine was in my glory box and I opened it last year. So how good is it that we're using things that we've already got? <laughs> oh, that was a bit was a bit rugged, that one, Wes, but that's all right. It's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> Radio. so there we go. We've got our two bits. So put on our, um, put on our attachment, buddy. You really do feel like Nuna in the, in the, um, yep. So, okay. Spaghetti first. Oh, and it's really durable because it was made in the eighties. <laughs> Righto. So we're going to make spaghetti. So all you have to do every pasta machine. Um, I know Kelly's probably put a link to the pasta machine in the chat. Um, firm, the mix shop make one very similar to this actually. Um, and it, Everyone has an attachment that comes off. Um, so you can do plain roll, spaghetti roll, or fettuccine roll. So they've all got that. So now we're going to try spaghetti roll. Okay, so you can only start when you've got it already rolled out on, on number one. Number one really is your, is your go-to. Oh, a bit thick. No, I mean a bit wide. That's it, go. That's it. That's it, keep going, keep going, keep going, that's it. Beautiful, keep going. <laughs> the 
It's like teaching to drive. Keep going, slow down, slow down, keep going, up, oh, give way. <laughs> Radio. So there's our spaghetti. How good is that? So now there is a drying rack that you can buy um, on the mix shop. I actually don't have it, but you can just get a, um, you know, um, I'm trying to think of what I could do. Um, a stick was what I was looking for. I've got upstairs, I've got some dowel, but you can just stick that between two containers and dry that out. But you just want to make sure it's got a little bit of, like I said, you don't want it, um, you don't want it drowned in flour, but the flour does help it start to dry out. So you want to make sure it's nice and wide open like that. Now I want to put that, Wesley, on a plate. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go to fettuccine now, darling. Um, obviously, much better to dry it laying flat over something than like that, but I'm going to cook this tonight, so it doesn't really matter. Rightio, now we're going to go fettuccine. So thicker. Okay, here we go. Up there, keep going. Oops. Yep. That's it. So there we go. There's our fettuccine. Some of those will just need a little bit of a prize open. Can you grab me another plate for that? Yeah. And there's our fettuccine. So it does go quite a long way. Like that's quite a, that probably be enough for one person. So if you were doing like the four, that would be plenty for four people. Like if you did all this. Now, you can take that attachment off. We're going to do all that again. And we're going to show you a really cool little thing that we only did for the first time last night. So who likes who likes ravioli? Anybody? <laughs> Excellent. What flavour ravioli do you like, Kel? We like spinach and ricotta. Oh, that's our favourite, isn't it, Wes? <laughs> I'm so pleased you said spinach and ricotta because that's what we're making now. Radio, right go, darling. Thank you. Now, it doesn't matter. To, well, it still, do, it still does matter. You're still best with square bits, but um, for the next bit, it's actually round is what you're after, but you can't get, you can't get this round, so... Oh, is this I haven't one? made ravioli, so I'm keen to see you do oh, this. Oh, well, there's a couple of ways of making ravioli. So on the mix shop, there are the ravioli stamps. And they're, oh, let's just go like that. Let's go. Um, they're like a, a, they're a stamp, basically. To, and they will cut out your um, piece of pasta from this size. So you just, you'd have your sheet like this and... You get the stamp and you go along and you cut out your stamps of square pasta. Then you turn it over, you put your um, filling in the middle, you turn it over and then you press it down and that seals your edges. Okay, and that, you can do that by hand. You can do that with a knife, cutting it, um, popping a bit of your mixture, folding it over and then pressing it down with a fork if you wanted to, if you didn't have the, the appliance for it. Not the appliance, the gadget. But we got a gadget last week. And <laughs> we used it last night for the first time. And we did, we did overfill a couple. Um, it wasn't all smooth sailing, but luckily I've made the mistake, so I'll be able to tell you how to use it. And they're not expensive. They're only... The hexican dumpling tray is only $14.95 at the mix shop. So I reckon I got $14.95 of value out of it last night because it was delicious. And I actually made it for... Wes had a friend over... And the other two kids, my other two kids, um, I made them spinach and ricotta um, last night. And I actually bought a packet as well because I wasn't sure. I was testing it out for the first time, the, this hexican dumpling maker. And I wasn't sure if I was going to um, show you today or what if it was going to work or whatever. I should have more faith, but... I, um, I bought a packet of just like Latina um, pasta, cheese pasta stuff out of from Woolworths as well. 
And um, so I served them up the homemade pasta and I said, oh, does anyone else want a little bit more? And they all had a little scoop of the bought one as well. And they all said that the homemade was better. And I was like, oh, that's made my day. That's my 14.95's worth just there. Rightio, so we've got some flat um, size one pasta here. And, oh, can you turn the thermomix off and put it back on, Lizzie? Because we are going to cook some pasta in a second as well. Thanks, buddy. Um, righto, so we've got that. We've got our dumpling, hexagonal dumpling maker. So that's what it looks like when you get it. So it's got little feet and little um, sections. So all you have to do, it says to lightly flour this. I'm not really sure how to lightly flour that. I just sort of chuck some flour on it and hope for the best. And it worked, so that's all right. So we want to put our pasta on there to start with. And just give that a cut around the edge. And you don't want to have anywhere where there's obviously no bottom. So you can have a little bit of an overlap. There. I'm going to be a little bit short here, Wes. So you might have to just cut there. A oh, little, little bit over. That's okay. Okay, so give that a good press down. Then with something that's not got a sharp end like an acrylic nail, I learnt yesterday, just give each of those a little press in. Okay, but you don't want to break any of them. So it's literally just stretching the pasta just a tiny bit um in those just a just a tiny little bit then we're going to add our filling now our filling is very simple it's just oh i didn't thank you wes wes decided last night that it did need a little bit of salt and pepper added so it's just two tablespoons of um ricotta and uh about two tablespoons of spinach and a bit of salt and pepper and it's just mixed together that's all that's all we're having in our spinach and ricotta. Give it a good mix. And you just want to put a tiny, like literally, a tiny little drop in each, um, each circle. Like that. So it feels a bit fiddly at this stage, but you'll be impressed with how many you get when you do it. Any questions so far in the chat there, Kel? Someone talk to me while I'm doing this. I'll be a while. No questions, Gem. <laughs> uh, Jeanette says that her favourite is beef. So how would you what is do it? that? Beef yeah, ravioli? So, yeah, so you could just make up uh, um, your filling. Um, so I would just get, you know, a couple of teaspoons of mints or tablespoons of mints. You could use... Um, you know, if you had, um, if you'd done like a slow cooked um, beef um, roast or something like that, you could use leftovers, just two tablespoons or actually you probably want four tablespoons if that was all you're doing because it's about four, about four tablespoons does this whole, um, one whole batch. So any, any filling that you've had, you could do even like, um, if you did like a savoury mince, you could do, um, you could just blitz that up a little bit further in your thermomix you, you wouldn't want it too chunky you'd want it fairly fairly mushy uh, amy has made a great suggestion that a piping bag would work great here instead of um yeah turning it on i actually thought that last night and i've got one there um even the cupcake pen gem the cupcake pen might work just to put like one you really need one drop can you see how much like i'm literally doing yeah. Like, I reckon a fifth of a teaspoon yep. is all I'm putting. The first one I did last night, um, I probably put a teaspoon in all of them and it was a bit of a disaster. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a disaster. Some of them still worked, but it wasn't how it was supposed to be. Now, Wes, we need to think of the most economical way of putting this on so that we've got enough. Oh, thank you, Shane. Last night, I was actually using 
my kitchen shears out of the toolkit to do this. It's actually really a lot easier than a knife. Yeah, you are freaking me out a bit with your dough mat underneath you there. I oh, know. Yeah, <laughs> Shane's saying the same thing there. He's like, oh, don't cut on the mat. No. <laughs> it's like it's only when you forget that you've got the mat there and you press really hard, okay, in my defence. Look, I'm just going to, like, give these little bits. Look here. Look, I've actually got just enough. I thought we were going to have to roll out another sheet there. Okay, like that. Then you just give it a really good push down, okay? And you'll start seeing the little hexagons. Are they hexagons? I think they are. Um, come out. I'm just going to take that mat away, actually, because the feet grip to the bench. So you just give it a push down. And as you can see, you can actually see how you've gone because you can see underneath you've got your little parcels of, um, of stuff. And last night, quite a few of those were like vomiting out <laughs> the mixture. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yes. Wes, can you put the Thermomix jug back on? Put some water in it and put it back on here, please. It's just here, darling. <laughs> Rightio. So then you get your rolling pin. Where's my rolling pin gone? Here it is. Um, and you roll over those really hard. Like that. And you want to make sure you've got a bit of flour on there so that your um, dough doesn't stick to your rolling pin. Okay. And then you think, oh, it hasn't, hasn't cut them because you can't actually press hard enough for it to cut. Well, I can't. And then all you have to do is pick it up like this and you've got all your pieces like that are ready to go. Then this is where you... It, you could you probably could push harder and they I did get some last night where these were just coming apart but then you can just snip these out and they're perfect little raviolis um yes buddy boil the water so Wes is just putting some water in actually Wes we want to put the blade cover in so how we're going to cook this is we've put our water in and you're going to other way around, I think, buddy. Is it? I oh, know. You're right. Oh, I'll just let Wes do it. <laughs> what would I know? <laughs> there we go. So we're just putting our blade cover in. Now, this is an additional accessory that you can get for your Thermomix. Did it work? Yeah, I'm going to push it on. Yeah. There we go. Yes, that's right. So we've put our water in there. We've put our blade cover in. Um, you can get the blade cover on the mix shop. It just covers the blade so that it doesn't mush up the water. And there we go. So see these ones are coming apart by themselves. Do you want to help me with these ones? Yes. You just pull them apart like that. And then we'll put them, we'll just give them a little dust. Now, the way to cook this homemade pasta, everybody's probably made um, normal pasta in the Thermomix, but the blades are too, the blades turning are too strong for your homemade pasta, especially if you're going to cook it straight away. So because it's soft and you haven't dried it completely, it literally only needs to be in boiling water for three minutes, okay, and it's cooked. So that's where the blade cover comes in. Are you just going to do these, are you? Okay. <laughs> um, so that's where the blade cover comes in handy. Because you can actually have your water boiling. You can have it so that they won't touch the blades at all. And it's still getting a little bit of a swirl um, around to cook the, the pasta as well. So there we go. Cook three minutes. Yes, only three minutes. So what I'll show you is, say, the... I might cook the fettuccine and show you the fettuccine cooking as well. What was that? Sorry, Shane. Okay. So, while that's heating up, <laughs> um, can I just tell everybody about the host rewards? So, for those of you who, oh, sorry, Catherine, you want your, um, you want your water to be boiling, but I'll actually show you there is a recipe that you can go into it so you don't even have to think about your amounts. Um, but Wes has just put this on kettle mode at 100 to get it started, but I'll, when I'm doing it, I'll show you where to go for that. Um, so let me tell you, if you have invited people along and you can, um, as an owner, you are entitled to host rewards. This is the old one, Shane. This is not the right one. 
disregard the top line. <laughs> um, but those of you who invited a friend along, your consultant will be sending you a discount um, code and you'll be able to buy either a thermo server, one of all of the one of the thermo servers, or the Matt Duo pack um, for a discounted price, or free if one of your friends that comes along decides to buy a Thermomix in the next seven days. So let your consultant know that that's what you um, want to do. And you can always um, come to more of our cooking experiences. I don't know exactly what we're doing next fortnight, but we will be here, same time, same place. Um, and you can invite your friends along and get start collecting some of those host rewards um, as well. Excellent. How's our water going? 50 degrees. How are you going there, Wes? Oh, what are you using? The back end of the... No, <laughs> That's an interesting... Oh, righto. Cutting on the bench with the scissors. Excellent. <laughs> so the toolkit is very handy, <laughs> which does come with a thermomix at the moment if you like. Why would you be using a knife for that, darling? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Righto. Let's get a little plate for our ravioli as well. And again, just a little bit, sorry, Dylan, a little bit of flour just to start drying them out. We're going to make some more of these and have the same thing for tea again tonight. <laughs> Is that a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that you haven't had lunch yet, Wes. <laughs> He's just said, if we having these for lunch as well? We, we have been busy today. <laughs> Radio, There we go. That's looking good, Dylan. Um, so what other pastas have you made, Kel? What have you delved into? Good job. Just spaghetti and um, spaghetti? fettuccine. Yep. Yep. That's Excellent. It. Are we, I was going to make the, like, the spinach spaghetti, but and call it Shrek spaghetti, but we haven't ventured into that yet. Well, it's very easy. You just have to put the spinach in when you're doing your dough. So blitz it up, then put your flour in, your egg and your oil. Um, some people also, is it that they leave out? I'll have to check the tips actually. Let me have a look quick. Let me have a quick look. I think it is um, leaving out the egg is it leaving out the egg or is it might be leaving out the oil and then that might have that might help willie hang on a sec just bear with me while i find the um recipe here we go um oh no egg free so you can leave out the egg and you can replace the eggs with 100 grams of tomato juice and then that makes like a red sort of dough no but you definitely need the oil I thought I was right. Beautiful, Wes. How's that going? Radio. So, let me just, can you come over to the Thermomix for me, Shane? And let's just hop out of there for a second. I just want to go into my week and I just want to show them the recipe that you have to go into if you want to cook this fresh made pasta. So, there's a recipe called cooking gnocchi or pasta, okay? And it's different to cooking, boil. it's different to the boiled pasta one. So we'll go start cooking, um, click pass there, put your bowl on, make sure you put your blade cover in. Um, put your water in, salt, and actually it only aims for 98 degrees, there you go. So we were aiming for, um, we were aiming for 100, but now we're only aiming for 98. So that's good. And it's just literally just, we can't, it's literally just, can you see the bowl or not, Shane? No, you can't really. But it's literally just turning the water. So it's only just moving. Whereas when you're doing boiled pasta, it's going, you know, and it's, it's um, you know. And if you if you had dried out your pasta, so if you'd got your fettuccine, um, and it was completely dry, like the stuff that you buy in a packet, um, then you could put it in the same, um, just with the reverse blades, it'd be fine. But because it's fresh, you've got to be gentle with it. Right, yeah, how we go, Wes? Good. Good. Right, oh, we might start on those ones. 
should you cover it in um, flour? Radio. So yeah, these are going to be our little ravioli are done. You can just keep rolling. How about that? <laughs> Excellent. So there's our one. There's our other one that from before. And you can see how that's changed to now be the same again. So that's what we want. Actually, we're going to we'll keep, yeah, keep that one. Good job. I, I could probably retire soon. I think I've got my up and coming little um, thermo star here. And radio. I think we're pretty ready to go in now. So once that gets to there, oh, actually, we're only 85. Don't cut on my mat. If you do have a thermo mat, make sure you don't use a knife on it like I just did. And definitely don't say that if you do cut it that you've seen Gemma do it. I take no responsibility. I think probably bigger chunks than that. Yeah, me too. Do you reckon? Yeah. I reckon in four altogether. Yeah. Righto. <laughs> Excellent. What was that, sorry, Shane? Oh, uh, actually, yes. Cookie do. Thanks, Shane. Let's go to that. Okay. So, like you guys probably know, cookiedo.com.au is your one-stop shop for your Thermomix recipes. Now, if you are using your Thermomix a little bit, but you just you think that you would like to get a little bit more out of your cookie do, then um, Mel Bean and I are actually doing a cookie do session on the 24th of March, um, in the middle of the day, I think it is. Um, but we will record it um, as well. So let your consultant know if you would like that. So Mel knows everything there is to know about Cookie Do and how to, um, you know, search all the recipes. And she gives really great tips on recipes she's been making and also how to find great recipes. So if you're ready for a little bit more Cookie Do, make sure you reach out to your consultant and let them know that you want to um, register for that. Oh, actually, is that the... Oh, is that the recipe for the pasta kill? You didn't put the... Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, let your, let your consultant know that you want um, to learn a little bit more about Cookie Do because this session is great. It only goes for about 45 minutes, um, but it will help you with your meal planning and your shopping lists and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Thanks, Shane. What else have we got there? <laughs> yeah. So if you're not doing, who, who that has got a Thermomix, let me know in the chat. Put a little yes in the chat if you are using your cookie do to do your meal plans. Oh. <laughs> um, to do your meal plans. Who's doing, who's. Yep, okay, great. 100%, great, excellent. Um, well, if you want to learn more, I think this is definitely um, the place for you. Half organised. <laughs> Sounds like my, that's like my life. I'm half organised. You know, that's Melinda you, and that's a big thumbs up for Melinda. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you just feel like so much better if on a Sunday night you've done your meal plan, you've got your shopping either ordered or your shopping list ready to go or your shopping done. Um, it just makes you week run so much better i don't know i can't explain it absolutely i actually get my uh groceries delivered on a sunday night now yeah. so i'm set for the week no sense me um getting them on a friday or a saturday because it's all gone before monday yeah so i have food to pack in the kids lunches now yep yep i know kelly's like my idol i love I, you ring kelly and she's doing her shopping list she's like i can't talk i'm doing my I'm doing my online shopping. If I don't get it done now, I won't get it done and then I'll talk to you and then it'll be your fault that you that I didn't get my shopping in in time. <laughs> it's like, well, once I, I was talking to you, Gemma, and I didn't get it in and I ended up with one box of fruit. That's all I got in that order that day. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my fault all week that she hadn't done her groceries. I heard about it all week. Okay, we're up to speed here. So obviously as soon as your Thermomix says the... Um, the temperature it's going for then you can do that can i just hop in here for a sec Liz? thanks Holly. um okay what am i doing i don't know oh it's cooling down thank you wes what would i do without wes there we go 
So as soon as it's over, is it over 80? I think it, it does a cool down. Okay, remove, remove the measuring cup and pop in the, oh, now you go three minutes because it wants to know how long you're going to cook it for. So three minutes and we're going soft spoon. So we're literally, it's just stirring. And now I'm going to pop my pasta in. I should put some salt in this too. Where's this can be your lunch, darling? <laughs> a little bit of salt in your water. I don't put oil in my water when I'm cooking pasta. Who does? It's a bit of a personal preference. Do you, Shane? Oh, Shane does. I don't know. When, when is that, Shane? When do you cook pasta? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> who puts... Who puts... Oh, Jack, do you... Jack, is that yes to putting oil in the pasta or yes to doing a shopping list? Oh, it stops from starch boiling over. Does it? Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, excellent. Well, I, maybe we should put some in. Oh, no, it'll be all right. It's only three minutes, it's not gonna boil over. Um, carefully add the pasta, it's telling me what to do. Great, and we're gonna be ready to go. What are we gonna do with this stuff, Wes? Oh, we've got we've got some more um, we've got some more spinach and ricotta, so we might do that in again after everybody leaves us. <laughs> Rightio. Oh, we've still got a. Yep, we've got plenty to um, keep us occupied this afternoon. Righto, let's get cracking on this. Now, the other cool thing that I'll show you is how to strain your pasta um, out of your summer mix as well in one minute and 21 seconds. Breaks the water tension. Oh, Jack, this just sounds pretty um, technical, doesn't it? Who knew cooking could be technical? Righto, how are you going there, Wes? See, you can see that it's quite easy to do it with one hand. Wes, is got, Wes, Wes, <laughs> Wes can do it with one hand, but I can't. <laughs> oh, there you go, there's the cookie do link. Thank you, Kelly Gavin. That's to register for the Zoom for the cookie do session. Whereas you're making me look like a, a fibber because I've said that you can't do it with one hand and you've done all this yourself. Oh, I'm impressed. Righto. <laughs> Excellent. And now, um, when we're talking about fillings for your ravioli, as long as your um, filling is cooked, so make sure especially for the one that was asking about beef, make sure your filling's already cooked because you actually don't want to cook your pasta for longer than three minutes. So you wouldn't want anything inside that actually needed to be cooked. It's just literally heated through. So obviously spinach and ricotta, doesn't, it just needs to be heated, but make sure your beef's already cooked and all that kind of stuff as well. Excellent. Unlike dumplings, which you can actually make dumplings the same way. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Thank you for the peanut gallery. Um, you can make dumplings in that um, hexagonal dumpling maker as well. And that you can actually put raw mince in those if you use like the wonton wrappers because then they steam for a long, like, you know, you can steam them for 10 minutes or whatever and then they're fine. So I've got my pasta in my bowl. Thank you, Shane. There we go. Now the water's a little bit cloudy because I didn't actually wash the bowl in between. Uh, but I'm going to grab my, oh, big stretch, my simmering basket. I'm going to put it over the top of my pasta and then I'm going to drain the water out of it. So you just hold it there and drain the water out. Bit of shake. Oh, look at that, Wes. Looking good. Get some tongs. Can I just take over here for a second, darling? Where am I going here, Shane? It's here, okay. We're running out of bench space. Righty, right, there's our fettuccine. Oh, look at that, Wes. Sorry, there's no um, there's no sauce. <laughs> but you can make a you can make a pasta sauce, kids master chef. Do you reckon? What do you reckon, Wes? What do you mean? Kids master chef. Kel reckons you should go on kids master chef. Yeah. Yeah. Righto. 
We'll, we'll get it organised. Um, so there's our fettuccine cooked. Three minutes. How easy is that? Um, now, when you were drying it, in between rolling and making it in the Thermomix, you can make a pasta sauce in your Thermomix in like nine minutes. There's a, um, I'm trying to think of the one, what it's called. Is it Ara? Do you know what it is, Kel? It's just literally a tin of tomatoes, some basil, garlic, onion, and you just boil it up for nine minutes. It's And it's just a really basic um, pasta sauce. So if you've got leftover tomatoes that you want to get rid of, um, you can use um, fresh tomatoes as well. So if you just needed a quick, you know, something quick to whack in with your pasta, then that was that's a goer as well. Anyway, that is the end of our pasta class. Questions? Happy to stay on and, and answer any. Otherwise, you can leave meeting and we will see you next fortnight. Talk to your consultant about getting the link to register for next fortnight. Bye. Thank you, Gemma. No Thank problem. you, Ed.